Hello, my name is Jessica Northey. I am a student at Full Sail University in the BS Entertainment Business Degree Program. This podcast is assignment one of business law titled Legal Critic Review of the Good Wife Television Show. I will give a brief summary of the episode to include facts about the plaintiff, defendant, and present evidence crucial to the proceedings. Next, I will discuss the role of the legal critic and focus on legal issues in the show when presenting my opinions. As a legal critic, I am reviewing the television show's plaintiff and defendant characters, as well as how the case should have been decided versus how the case was decided on the episode called Alienation of Affection. In the Good Wife television show's episode, the plaintiff is Mr. Huntley and the defendant is the law firm where the main character of the show, Alicia, works at. There were multiple defendants in a complicated case. There were four lawyers involved, Alicia, Will, Diane, and David Lee. They were each given summons papers stating complaints against their actions during one of their previous divorce cases. Additional complaints stemmed from the equity partners who shared equally responsibility for profit and losses. Mr. Huntley filed a claim against the law firm and sued because the couple had reconciled after the divorce and wanted their assets returned. Mr. Huntley's first claim was based on an old state law in New York, alienation of affection, which is one of seven states who still has this law on the books. Mrs. Huntley had hired the law firm for the divorce case. Mr. Huntley complaint is that an intentional tort against the law firm, more specifically fraudulent misrepresentation tort claiming the defendant caused the plaintiff to be an injured party and suffer damages because of the defendant's actions of reckless discard for the truth and misrepresented material facts and conditions. Mr. Huntley claimed the stripper photos used in the divorce case against him was a setup from the divorce lawyer, David Lee. Therefore, the divorce would have not happened and he would still own the original assets prior to the divorce if the law firm hadn't fraudulently misrepresented their actions. Specifically, his old company called Bubble Elastic was now worth $44 million. The plaintiff claims the law firm caused their divorce in order to earn profits from the liquidation of the couple's assets. The firm had a contract that earned 5% profit from the sales of this asset after the divorce was final. The law firm was acting on behalf of Mrs. Huntley in order to liquidate the assets and split the assets 50-50 in the divorce. The lawyers met and interviewed all parties involved in a deposition. Mrs. Huntley stated that she tried to reconcile with Mr. Huntley twice during the divorce proceedings. The reason the lawyer's assistant set up the stripper to meet up with Mr. Huntley was to have him drink only, not for sex, which Mr. Huntley acted on on his own accord to do. He drove home that night and was set up for an arrest for a DUI so that Mrs. Huntley could win full custody of their daughter. Mrs. Huntley was unaware of this and how David Lee's assistant hired a photographer to take pictures of Mr. Huntley kissing a stripper as well. Mrs. Huntley decided it was only a kiss and was now fully reconciled with her ex-husband and saw the photo as a simple kiss and nothing more. Since it was not David Lee who set up the meet with Mr. Huntley and the stripper personally, he did not consider it as a perjure against himself during the deposition. When the plaintiff could not use the photos of Mr. Huntley kissing the stripper against the defendant, the plaintiff's lawyer, Mr. Preston, used another tactic. He went after Alicia for fraud. Mr. Preston claimed she used her personal divorce experience to talk Mrs. Huntley into going through with the divorce the second time she tried to reconcile with her marriage. Alicia stated she was only there to comfort her. The deposition comes to a break so they can discuss their next strategy. Will points out that Mrs. Huntley signed a conflict of interest waiver. Therefore, there is not a fraud case. Except, the show needs a little extra drama by adding the conflict of Alicia not filing the paperwork correctly, or perhaps it was lost because it was her first year working at the firm and made a mistake. However, this claim did not hold because David Lee and Will magically found the paperwork when they looked through an old employee's files during that case. Naturally, Mr. Preston did not believe the missing writer from the waiver could show up from nowhere at the exact moment it was needed. Mr. Preston 
called in an old employee, Carrie, into the deposition for questioning about the recent discovered writer. He wanted to prove the writer was a forgery. Carrie backed up Alicia and stated that they had shared an assistant and that the files could have impossibly been filed incorrectly, that the defendants were an ethical employer and there was nothing in it for him to make this statement. After Carrie's testimony did not go well for the plaintiff, Mr. Preston said that they were going to test the ink to see if it was a recent or older ink. The show ends with a bang. Diane receives a tip about the plaintiff in the case towards the end of the show that Mr. Huntley was cheating again. The defendants provide for photographs that proved he was cheating again. The entire case was dropped because the ex-wife, Mrs. Huntley, decided she wanted to end the relationship again. The divorce was valid. The case against the lawyers was automatically dropped. The complaints from the equity partners were also settled and the show ends. I love television drama. It leaves me hanging on the edge for the next episode almost every time. I enjoyed the TV show on CBS called The Good Wife. In a recent episode called Alienation of Affection, the plaintiff was a man who wanted his cake and eat it too. The fact that one of his companies was sold during his divorce was now worth $44 million made him feel emotionally upset that he lost out on this money. And of their assets were sold in the divorce in order to split assets in half to distribute as liquid assets. His ex-wife, Mrs. Huntley, was a naive woman who reconciled with her ex-husband and supported him in the case against the law firm. Mr. Huntley's lawyer, Mr. Preston, was eager to gain his commission from the lawsuit and did not fully investigate the case before proceeding. He did not ask the right questions to reach the truth. The defendants, Alicia Will, David Lee, and Diane, are all smart lawyers who may or may not bend the truth. Without evidence, it is difficult to prove in order to defend their position to protect themselves. They will do what it takes, wouldn't you? That is the job of the lawyers, to protect the firm under the law as it can be proven as fact and evidence. The case should have been decided differently if the right question was asked. Instead of asking if David Lee hired the stripper to meet Mr. Huntley, his lawyer needed to ask a broader question. A better question would have been to ask if anyone who worked for their law firm hired a stripper to interfere with the case to steer it their way. The lawyer's assistant would have been questioned and had to confess the truth in order to avoid perjuring herself. In real life, the case would have been settled right then and there. The law firm would have taken a hit with all the equity partners, and the lawyer's assistant should be in jail for interference tort. In the episode, the conflict of interest waiver that Mrs. Huntley signed was enough for them to win the case because even if the ink was new, Alicia's best memory is what the law is based on which was that she did have the writer. They chose to expose the husband of his cheating because it was a concrete way of settling the case in their favor. The feelings and relationships of the marriage by keeping the cheating secret was not even considered. Like I said, a man who wants his cake and eats it too, always bites off too much and loses the entire cake. Thank you for listening. This has been a JessicaNorthy.com production.